And here we go. Jumping at one, the 2017 the European Indoor Silver Medal of day three. Germany, the women's Reisich. pole vault. Representing Germany, Lisa Reisic. Jumping at two, the 2015 World Championship representing bronze medalist Greece. representing Greece, Nicoletta Kyriakopoulou. 2015 World Bronze Medalist, Nicoletta Karapulu. Jumping at three, 11 times the national champion of 11 Belarus. 11 times the national champion of Belarus, Irina Zuk. Jumping at four, Going next to France, holder national record holder Nino Nino representing Nino France is Nicola Zua Romana. Jumping at five, the 2012 Olympic champion. A really Admiral familiar Nino figure there, represented the United Jennifer States of America, you, Jennifer Shaw. Jumping at six, she's been seventh and sixth in the last Representing Great Britain, Holly Bradshaw. Holly Bradshaw. One of the favourites for this title, representing Jumping Greece. Seven, the reigning world it's the Olympic reigning European world Olympic and European champion, champion Katerina Stefanidi. Jumping at eight. Representing Twice Switzerland, Angelica Moser. Angelica Moser. Jumping in great this form year this year, another Jones athlete representing the United States of America, Katie Najot. Jumping at ten, the Asian record holder and tenth in the Asian order, champion, representing China, China, Ling Lai. At eleven is the 2015 world champion. Is the Cuban athlete, the 2015 Yaracy world Silva. champion, Yaracy Silva. Representing Venezuela, Rocalenis Pedo. Jumping at 13, from Slovenia, 19 times, the national champion 19 times Slovenia, Slovenian Tina champion, Schutte. it's Tina Schutte. Jumping at 14, and a third American to make this women's pole vault final. Jumping in 14th position, it's Sandy Morris. Jumping at 15, the 2018 Commonwealth Games champion. Representing Canada, Canada is one of the favourites for this title. It's Alicia Newman. Jumping at 16, the fourth in the World Championships Sweden, four Angelica years ago Vincent. now in Beijing. Still only 26 years of age is Angelica Benson. And jumping at 17 with and the 17th the woman to make this pole vault final. She's an authorised neutral athlete, Angelica Sidorova. A 17 woman final. A 17 woman final here. 460 was the qualification. So much depth in this woman's pole vault event. Really, really reminiscent of the men's event these days. So this is the first look that we have of Holly Bradshaw. This is the opening height. 4 meters 50, not a problem. Interesting that the scorecard is going 450 and then it's going straight up 20 centimeters to 470. So that supersedes what it took to automatically qualify for this final. That was 460. So quite a lot of the girls are having an attempt at this. Only Jen Sir from the USA has decided not to. This is the first time that we look at Stefanidi, the Greek athlete. Well, she hardly got out of third gear there on the runway. A lot of these athletes will be using softer poles, shorter poles for some of these opening heights. They're a little bit easier to bend. As the bar goes up, we'll expect them to change poles a few times. We might not necessarily see that. So this is Angela de Moser from Switzerland. This is the same bar height. All of the girls will be coming in at the 450, except for Jen Shaw, who's 
obviously feeling very confident. Maybe a little bit of a gamble. She's going for the next height, 470. Which is really important that a lot of these ladies decide just to, you know, get their eye in at these early opening heights. So Moza, she made that look good as well. It's a little bit of a relief sometimes when you clear that opening bar. Of course, this is a game of strategy. You don't want any failures in these early bar clearances. If athletes tie on the same height of bar, it goes back on count back. So any early failures do go against you. One of the three athletes from the United States of America, Katie Najot. She's been in great form this year. She's tipped for a medal. In fact, you can't call it. There's, you know, five or six athletes. They beat each other regularly on the circuit. Maybe Stephanie has the advantage over a few. A few actually fancy Zinarova as well. But that was a nice clearance there. Sandy Morris, what an experienced campaigner she is. Second best pole vaulter in history. Yeah, she was second on count back London two years ago. Ended up with the silver, Stefanidi getting the gold on that occasion. Oh my goodness. Five meters 50 and there was distance between herself and the bar. Sandy Morris has struggled this season with a little bit of injury. She said it's been quite a frustrating season for her. But look at that concentration, the focus. Even though 450 is well below the capabilities of these ladies, it's such a tricky event. They have to keep the focus at every single jump. So this is Alicia Newman. She's third on the world rankings in 2019. She's improved the national record three times this year outdoors, all the way to 482. Looked good winning the Diamond League in Paris earlier this season. Oh, four metres 50. She looked like she took off a little bit too soon. She had the height, but she came down on the bar. Just going back, looking what she did wrong, getting a feel for the what it feels like to plant that pole. So as I say, it's a game of strategy. She'll have two more attempts at this height, of course, but she will have an X by her name. A lot of these other ladies have already cleared it on the first time occasion. So if it does come up to a higher height and she ties on that height with someone else, they will go ahead of her because of that early bar failure. This is a great athlete, Angeletta Bakistan from Sweden. She's two-time world junior champion and she's gone out to 481 this year. Really coming through now on the senior ranks and that was a great clearance. She'll be happy with that. Taking a little bit longer, of course, 17 athletes. So there'll be a little bit more time than usual between these attempts. Got some really great height on that, she liked it. So this is one of the athletes who looks one of the favorites for the title. This is Zinarova. She's had some great battles this year, particularly with Stefanidi. And Stefanidi's got such a great card, hasn't she? Reigning world, European and Olympic champion. But on this season's form, eight competitions between the two of them, Zinarova has actually beat Stefanidi five of those eight occasions. So this is Silva, the Cuban athlete. She's medaled at these world championships on the last three occasions. Can she make it a fourth? And again, making light work of this opening bar. And Alicia Newman from Canada. We can let you know that she did clear the bar on a second attempt. So that's everybody good to go. 17 athletes will go on to the next bar, 4 meters 70. Jennifer Sir from the US, this is the first time we're gonna see her. She opted out at the first bar height of 450. 
Oh, and she believed in herself, didn't she? Saved a little bit of energy. The other women have had to have a couple of attempts at 450. Just took her just the one. She's indicating to her husband, Rick, there what to do with the uprights. They can set them at different widths. And she's saying we need to move it back. Holly Bradshaw finished in fifth position and sixth position at the previous two Olympic Games. It took her one height, 460, to qualify in the qualifying a couple of days ago. 450 at her first attempt. And she follows that with a first time clearance at 470. These early bar heights are really important. Really important for that count back. The bar is going to go up to 480 and that'll sort a lot of the women out at that height. 470 is real international height. So to be clear in 470 at a World Championship final is really, really important. Katerina Stefanidi. What will the next hour or so hold for her? So dominant on the circuit for a number of years. Four times winner of that Diamond League the past four years. And that was a lovely clearance, she liked that. Again, another athlete to go clear at four meters 70. So here we have Katie Najot. So too, will she attempt 470? And the same results. Again, perfect conditions inside this arena. Hardly a breath of air. This will really help the ladies. Really good stable conditions allows them to control a lot of things. This is Sandy Morris the USA oh and that's a fantastic clearance she's happy with herself I wonder whether six months or so ago when she's had lots of injuries wonder whether she actually thought that she would be at these championships she's given herself a chance two first time clearances four meters 50 negotiated Four meters 70 negotiated. Four meters 80 will be a next attempt. And these are fascinating images, aren't they? As you can see, the ladies almost curl themselves. They arc themselves over that bar at the top. So this is Alicia Newman. It took her two attempts at 450. But first attempt here at 470. Yes. Well, she needed that, didn't she? She grimaces somewhat. Going over to get a little bit of feedback. I presume her coach is over there, that's what she'll be doing. She'll be making decisions now, whether she needs to change up the pole. That was actually a really short pole. You could see when she actually left herself and she threw the, almost threw the bar away, they pushed the bar up to help them get towards that bar height but she actually had quite a short pole there, so she'll definitely need to take out a longer pole to help her get that extra 10 centimeters or so for the 480. Alicia Benson, the Swedish athlete, this is her first attempt. Nope. Well, she'll have to go again. So here we are, this is Lisa Reisich, the German athlete. This is her final attempt at 4 meters 70. No. Oh, disappointment on her eyes. A, a few tears coming into those eyes, of course. It wouldn't be normal if she didn't feel the emotion, if she didn't feel disappointed. She's worked hard to get here. A season's best of 4.63, so she was asking a lot of herself. Great images there of the women as they all go undergo their own individual preparations. Yeah, 
there, just catches it with her thigh on the way down. Well, she is a World Championship finalist. Angelica Benson, the Swedish athlete, two times the World Junior Champion, been in great form this year. 481 personal best. This is her third attempt, and she's got it. Oh, Benson goes clear. And the Swedish flags have been thrown. Oh, she's happy. She'll go on to negotiate the next bar. Goes up 10 centimeters to 4 meters 80. And her championships lives on. Quite a nice crowd gathered, actually, watching that women's pole vault. Jen Sir there just doing a few final preparations. You see she's spraying her hands with that black tack that you'll see a lot of the athletes putting on their hands. Some use tack, some use chalk. Maybe a little bit more tack needed on an evening like this. It's quite hot inside the arena. Well, whilst we wait to see the next vault, the multiple world decathlon champion and former world record holder Dan O'Brien is getting down there amongst it for us. And he's alongside a man who knows a thing or two about pole vaulting, Sam Kendricks, one of the favourites for gold in the men's pole vault. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Jenny. I am here with the defending champion here in the pole vault. Uh, Sam, you, you said this is your third world championships. You're coming back to defend, but you uh, you take the time here to come out and watch the women. This is a pretty familiar setting. You guys are a very close-knit group in the pole vault. Yeah, you know, I'm real happy to be here for my third championship, and I don't often get the chance to be a spectator. And so when they give us an extra day between the prelim and final, I wanted to use that spare night to come support the women. We get a look at Jen Shore here. How about her career? I mean, how influential, you know, uh, was she when, when you first started jumping? Well, I can only describe Jen Shore as a force. You know, her and her rivalry with Yelena Isambayeva back in the late 2000s and 2010s is, is legendary. It really is. And I am so proud of her for making this team because she is, she is the veteran. She really is. Even in this competition, she started higher than everyone else. That's a very veteran move to take. You know, when I got over here and we started talking, I, I asked you if you were assisting anybody in particular, and you said, no, no. But, uh, you know, you're not wearing the red, white, and blue. You got a gray T-shirt on tonight. Doesn't mean you're neutral, does it? No, not at all. Well, I do have a lot of friends on the track tonight. And as you as you travel around the stadium, in this familiar circle, you do get recognized a lot. And I really wanted these athletes out on the field to be highlighted. Well, we've also got some uh, uh, former, uh, former champions and medal winners here tonight uh, coaching some of the American athletes as we see a miss there from Jen. Uh, you know, Jeff Hartwig is here, Brad Walker certainly, and you uh, you, uh, you took Brad Walker's American record, but it's great to see those guys coaching these young ladies. Absolutely. You know, there's only so many ways you can get back to the sport, and the best direct way is to influence the, the top levels because that has to trickle down. The athletes, they, when they go back home, they're going to take the things they learned at this championship to the next generation of athletes. I hope to do the same with the young guys that are on my squad. Now, when I see guys like Jeff, and Brad and others, a smattering of Olympians, world champions, and, and many other champions besides in this crowd, I say, well, this is the place to be if you're really interested in the event. Well, and you're sitting with uh, a pretty popular Frenchman there. He came up to watch with you. It looks like he's trying to stay undercover as well. Yeah, you know, Renault, this is his first final not to make in a while. Renault Le Villani, the reigning world record holder. Um, and, but his brother, he's here to support his brother and his French teammate, uh, Nino here tonight, so I'm really proud of him. Even though he didn't have to be out here, he could have been on a plane home. He says he's a true fan, a true friend of the sport, and it, we have a great time just watching the first row, kind of incognito. Well, outside of the pole vault, what are some of the events you enjoy watching most? Absolutely love the triple jumps. So this is a great night for me to watch Will Clay and Christian Taylor battle it out once again. I don't know when you get the chance to see these guys go to head to head very often. I'm on the Diamond, Diamond League. I'm in every meet I get to go to. And I just, I seize the chance when I get to watch these moments because a lot of times I have to focus on my lane on the track. You think, uh, you think a world record could go in either the triple jump or maybe tomorrow night the 400 meter hurdles? Absolutely. You know, when you when you get this melting pot, this, this, this slew of dynamite thrown together with these athletes that have been building up this entire season, you don't know what could happen. I want to see something like that happen in my event. And so even as you get that mix of emotion and 
preparation together, that's a, that is how you make a championship effort. And championship effort often comes with records. Well, then this late spring, early summer, you uh, you managed 606 at the U.S. Championships. You had the competition won, but you continued to jump. There were just good things going on that day. Why were the conditions so right for you to jump so high at that time? Well, the thing I like to say about elite athletes is they're, they're all so good, that they're good together. Uh, it's not often that you can claim that that moment is yours. We have Katarina Stefaniti on the track right now, uh, an Olympic champion, a world champion. She knows when to put that moment together, but she knows that it's not coming every single day. And you have to seize the moment and see it for what it is when the time arises. And that was me this July when I had the chance to go for the American record. And I got to do it in my own time zone, which is real special. Well, it was the highest jump in the last 25 years. Let's talk about conditions here in the stadium. Um, you know, we've got some artificial air here in the stadium, and it makes for a nice situation for these athletes because they can cool down just a little bit. It's not as hot inside as it is outside. But uh, what do you like, what, you do, what do you dislike uh, about the situation of the pole vault here in the stadium? Well, it's absolutely counterintuitive when you come to Doha and you step off the plane out of the airport and you say, absolutely, this is the hottest place I've ever been in my life. And you come into the stadium and it's pleasant and everyone is maybe wearing a long sleeve shirt and comfortable. But when you go back to walk on the bus or go out to the warm up track, there you start to need your water and your electrolytes again. Now, I can tell you from firsthand experience, it's a very pleasurable experience on the track considering what the training environment has been like here in Doha for the last week for these athletes, the marathoners, the race walkers, we got the best of it all right here. The artificial air does make a difference. It pushes a massive amount, a massive volume of cool, dry air across the track, and that can impact how these jumpers interact with the runway and their poles. Well, let's uh, maybe get a prediction from you. We've got all the We've got all the principles still in, and you said one of the things that you noticed that this was the first time that you saw a final that everybody made a bar, and that, and I've had to think about that as well. It's like, really, is it that uncommon? It, it truly is. They even set a very aggressive progression today. 17 women in this final, and I noted to Dan that every girl made a bar. Every woman came here and executed a complete jump, made a bar, and they get to go home with some success. I don't see that happen very often. And I've been to a bunch of championships at many different levels that these women are ready to jump. They're ready to compete. Now, when it comes down to predictions, I always like to throw five ladies in the mix because you, you never know whose day it's gonna be. It's, we got three Americans in the hunt, a great Russian, Angelica Sidorova, a Canadian, and also the Greek. So I threw six in there, but I don't, I don't, I don't wanna decide between my American dogs in the fight. All right, Sam, good luck to you. Thank you for your time. All right, thanks, Dan. So I really enjoyed the insights earlier of Sam Kendricks. Thanks to Diana Bryan. It's not what you know, it's who you know, as the saying goes. We saw these ladies having a lot of difficulties at 4 meters 80, and rightly so. This is the sort of height that will sort out the medalists. Jen Sir failed at the first attempt. So did Bradshaw, Stephanie and Najot, can Sandy Morris take advantage? And she can! That was a fantastic vault! Well, what has Sandy Morris done? She's given herself a fantastic chance of taking one of those medals. What a great shot as she actually looks up at the bar. She actually starts smiling as she comes down on it. Oh, it's gonna take these girls to go first attempt at 485 to actually improve their scorecard now. That was a real, really important jump. Really important clearance for Sandy Morris. So this is Alicia Newman. This is her attempting 480 for the first time. She had a failure early on at 450. First time clearance at 70. And knocks that bar off for the first time at 4 meters 80. Oh, Sandy Morris. She was second in the US Championships. Silver two years ago. The same colour medal that she took the year before that in Rio. Stephanie won that. 
as she did the gold in London. But this athlete is one of the athletes that Canada are really looking at. As I said earlier, Canada didn't win a single medal two years ago. They've already got two in the pocket from this championships. But Alicia Newman is in a really tough competition here. I would actually say never has a depth of this women's pole vault been as so strong. And this is the Swedish athlete Benson. It took a three attempts at 470. Personal best, 481. She's getting right up there with this next attempt at the 480 bar. So here we go. Lots of speed on the runway. Oh, and it wasn't bad, was it? It was a decent attempt. I think she'll take some confidence from that. She just puts her pole down. She'll walk over to the coach, get a little bit of feedback, but that was, that was a good attempt. Yeah, she's happy. So technical, of course, this event. So many different phases that the athletes have to go through. It's really important, the psychology of this event as well. Obviously, the event of your competitors, not the bar down, that gives you a greater chance. But I've been speaking to Holly Bradshaw, the British athlete, quite a bit recently. And she said that you really have to just sit alone, ignore what your competitors are doing, think about yourself. If they fail a bar, of course, it goes to your advantage, but only if you can clear the bar as well. So it's very much an individual event. Have to keep yourself focused throughout. Well, this is another one of those favorites. Sam Kendricks mentioned this athlete, the authorized neutral athlete, the Russian athlete. Zidorova. She's been in cracking form so far this season. Oh, and there we go. Four meters 80 as well to join Sandy Morris. That was a really important clearance for her. Four ninety one personal best. So she has gone over the height of four eighty quite regularly. She won the match Europe versus the USA a couple of weeks ago. A couple of silver medals at the World Indoors. No appearances, surprisingly, at the World Outdoor Championships. So this is her first final. And there won't be too many women who clear this 480 bar. This is the second attempt now for sure. Two girls gone clear so far at this height. Oh, and she just drifted off, didn't she, to the left-hand side there. Four meters 80. Not many of the women in this field have done that this season. Just looking through the cards there, we've got Morris and Sidorova, first time clearances at 480. All the other girls had bar failures at the first height. We're just looking back on there. It always looks like they've got the height, but you need to propel yourself further. Height alone isn't good enough. These athletes have to work really, really hard to get their measurements and their accuracy right on the runway, the position at plant, then it at takeoff. You can see Holly Bradshaw there just going through her own familiar routine. Interesting to see on a necklace there. I think she's got a Union Jack and I think she's got the Rio flag as well. Those two little pendants must signify the two Olympic Games that she's competed in. That's a nice touch. And here she goes, Holly Bradshaw, four meters 80 and she joins Morris and Sidorova with that 480. This is Stephanie Eady at the same time. And again, four women over that 480 bar. This competition is really, really hotting up. Katie Najat, what can she do? This is her second attempt. The pressure will be on somewhat on Katie Najat now to join the other four women. No, 
It was a good attempt. There wasn't much between herself and the bar there for women go clear. Well, drama everywhere in this arena. This is Newman. Can she get over the 480 bar? And she can. Five women clear at four meters 80. This is shaping up to be one of those competitions of dreams for these five women. Morris, of course, and Zinarova, first time clearances. Bradshaw, Stefanidi, and Newman, second time clearances. Oh, it was good, wasn't it? Looks like she's on a higher bar now than what she was at 470, and she's delighted. So, Jen Shaw, third attempt now at 4 meters 80. She needs this bar to continue in the competition. Oh, and it's not for her this evening. She took that gamble, didn't she? It paid off not to start at 450. She had a first time clearance at 470. And that's been her only clearance of the evening. She'll finish in joint sixth position. We can see Jen Shaw there, 37 years of age now. Absolutely remarkable to still be making the US team. So difficult, of course, to get on the team in so many disciplines, but to make a World Championship final as well. She's done amazingly well. So this is our American Patriots. This is Najat. She's going for her third attempt also at the 480 bar, and she needs this. Oh, oh, she had it, didn't she? She did rattle it on the way up. She had a look. She must have known that she rattled it. These athletes get a sense of that. She looked up almost willing it to stay on. Oh, she'll be so, so disappointed. So much respect and camaraderie between all these athletes, very much like there is in the men's equivalent. They compete against each other at all the Diamond League competitions and the lower competitions. None of them try to hide and avoid each other. And she had it, didn't she? But she just caught it there on her way down. Oh, you could just see it was just her chest. Oh, that's agonizing for her. On another day, that bar would have stayed on but not the day she wanted it to. So this is Silva, this is the Brazilian. Three-time medalist at the three last world championships, and she's in the same situation. No, she just didn't have the speed on the runway. She knew as soon as she planted the pole, it wasn't to be. So just aborted the jump. So she'll finish on four meters 70. This is not a sight that we want to see. I can tell straight away that Angelica is okay. She's signaling to the crowd, actually. Don't worry, I'm okay. So we're just looking now, Angelica Benson. We're just watching that third attempt. Oh, wow. So really fortunately, you know, it's something that you see in a comic book. The end of her pole projects almost into the stands there, actually. A little bit of concern there her, for her and her coach, but she looked fine. We do understand, as the rules go, that she can continue in the competition. We're just wondering whether she's going to get a pole. That was one of her larger poles. Whether she's going to actually, some of the girls will let her borrow her pole. She's very entitled to. This is uh, fascinating. That was a second attempt. So she does have one more attempt at the 480 distance. Really fortunately, it doesn't seem to have affected her too much psychologically. She's talking to Sandy Morris there. She's looking around. Athletes are entitled to use any pole. So even if the athletes bring their own poles, just wondering whether we can actually throw down to Dan O'Brien. Dan, you're there. Can you give us a perspective of the chat? What's going on down there? Well, it's really interesting, guys. She's, she didn't have the pole that she wanted in her bag. She was asking some of the other competitors if she could borrow one of the poles because you get to this, you get to this height. Lost to any 
Just wondering whether we've lost on there. No, no, I'm here, guys. I apologize. Yep. She got Romarin was the one that let her borrow a pole. I apologize there. I was trying to figure out who exactly that it was, but this is the pole vault community. They really support each other, and you heard that from Sam Kendrick. They come out, and they are essentially an international club. And she's over. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful, and they have a wonderful crowd down here. Everybody is on their feet. And it was nice that the officials gave her a little extra time, but she was searching in a number of different bags, and everybody was willing to lend her the pole that she needed. She found the right numbers, the ones that were working in her progression, and over she went. What a fascinating story. I think if I was Angelica Barkin, I'd want to actually have that pole. I'd be saying to Marin, you know, yeah, it's yours, but, uh, you know, this is my 480 pole. Absolutely fantastic in the arena to actually hear the crowd being so ecstatic. They witnessed something that was potentially very, very risky in qualifying there. Just one centimetre away from her personal best. What guts, what maturity from a young athlete to come back from potentially really you know, dangerous activity there. She had to attempt an event, you know, with a new pole, a new bar. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, there's no doubt the crowd have got a new favourite. It went absolutely wild in here because nobody really thought she could do it. So brave, so composed. This really is developing into a sensational final. It is. Five women clear now. Oh. We were hoping that we would have a sixth. So that was Zuck, the Belarusian athlete. She had two attempts already, two failures at 480. She decided that she was going to have an attempt at 485. She could have got an advantage if she managed to clear that first time, but unfortunately she didn't. So 470 will be her best height of this pole vault. Final. Back to Holly Bradshaw in this incredible pole vault competition. Bar now at 485. Not on that occasion. But that first time clearance at 4 meters 70 could really prove helpful. Joint third at the moment with the brilliant defending champion Katarina Stefanidi. This would be the best performance of her career by far, but there could be a long way to go. I think they could. There's still a lot of ladies in at this height. 4.85 would be a season's best for Bradshaw. Her best come quite a few years ago now, 4.87 indoors. Remember those stable conditions versus unstable outdoors. And this is Stephanie D. This is her first attempt at 4.85. Sandy Morris then from the United States of America. This is her first attempt at the bar 4.85. And she does it. She has got a clear card. She's almost not put a foot wrong this evening. She can't quite believe it. First time clearances at every bar 450 yes 470 yes 480 yes 485 yes four jumps four clearances that puts her in the driving seat she already was in the driving seat that's just enhanced it look at that determination she wants this she pushes the pole forward. That's what these competitors have to do. When they release, they try to get their hand up to the top of the bar, and then they push it forward all the way, art themselves over that bar. And what a great exponent of the event. Sit her over then. Oh, anything Morris can do, so can I. That was a great clearance. So a similar card for both of these athletes. Morris and Zidarova. Bradshaw and Stefanidi. 
in joint third at the moment. That's due to their second attempt clearance at 480, but a first time a clearance at 450 and 470, very importantly. Okay, here she goes, this is Bradshaw. First time attempt at 485. No. Oh, that's her second attempt, actually. That would be her outdoor personal best if she could get it. Stephanie D, like Bradshaw, the complete same scorecard so far. Can she go ahead of Bradshaw now on count back by getting a clearance at this? Yes, she can. She puts herself into the bronze medal position solo. That'll drop Bradshaw down to fourth position. So three women so far, clear, 485. Bradshaw, of course, has still got another attempt, as has Alicia Newman. So here she goes. Third attempt for Newman. Oh, it was close, wasn't it? Not as close as Benson, of course. Just having a quick word with the judge there. And it really is fascinating to see these images, these slow motion images. These women have got to get the speed, they've got to get the angle, they've got to get the trajectory, they've got to launch themselves up, push that pole forwards, then they've got to get themselves upside down an arch over the bar, absolutely incredible. This is her big occasion, this is third attempt, 485, needs this to stay in the competition. And it's not to be, that will be a fifth place finish for Alicia Newman here this evening. Clearance at 480. It was a second attempt at that 480 bar. She needed a second attempt at the 450 bar, her opening bar. It's a 480, her best height this evening. She's had a great season, picked up her first Diamond League win, and she really has put herself in medal contention. Even Sam Kendricks couldn't separate these ladies. He named six of them, Newman being one of them but her campaign ends in fifth position. This is the final attempt now for Angelica Benson. This is the borrowed pole, don't forget. She warmed the hearts of the crowd. But she'll go away from these championships really, really happy. Fourth position in 2015, of course. Sixth here, but such a mature attempt there. Okay, so Bradshaw, she decided to miss her third attempt at 485. It wouldn't have done her any good. She needs to get 490. She has one attempt at this bar. And it's not a bad one, actually. That will see her outside the medal. She'll finish in an agonizing fourth position, but a really good attempt at, at 490. So the bar is at 490 for the three remaining competitors. Sandy Morris, this is her first attempt. Clear bars at 450, 70, 80, 85. Can she carry on the process at 490? And she can! Oh, the crowd have just erupted in this arena. They're just realizing what they've seen here this evening. This is a fairy tale competition for Sandy Morris. She can't quite believe it. And she needs to still remain really composed. She might have to go up to the next bar. There's still a few girls that could really push her forwards here, but she looks like she's up for it this evening, doesn't she? 
You see those eyes as she's coming down the runway. She's planting that pole. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's such an established athlete over numerous years and uh, really great to see an athlete in great form here today. Well, this will definitely have put the pressure on the Russian athlete, the authorised neutral athlete, of course, it are over. She has to match Morris. And she does. Oh, my goodness. What a championship. Women's pole vault this is turning out to be. Two athletes, first time of clearance at 4 metres 90. That's just one centimetre short of Zinarova's personal best. Well, these are the last few moments of this Women's IAAF World Championships pole vault final. What is Sandy Morris thinking at this moment in time? Clearances at every bar she's attempted so far. Just needed four, five attempts so far. Some of the other athletes have had quite a few attempts, had to have second and third time clearances. Stephanie in particular. But here she goes, 4.95. Could this be the gold medal decider? She shakes her head. She has two more attempts, of course. So this gold medal contention carries on. This is Sidorova. She has the same scorecard as Morris up to this point. Five volts, five clearances. Morris, of course, the bar just came down on a first attempt at 4.95. What will be the outcome of Zidarova's first attempt? And they're completely even matched. It continues. A first time failure for Zidarova. That would have been a personal best for her. This is Stephanie D. She passed her second attempt at 490. She's had one. This is her 495 first attempt. Oh, second attempt, beg your pardon. This is where her competition finishes. She's picked up a bronze medal. A medal of any colour in this women's pole vault is such an, a fantastic achievement. What a performance from Sandy Morris. Amazing so far. Yeah, these ladies in the pole vault had to just wait for a moment. Proceedings were suspended momentarily. But here we go again. This is spine tingling stuff as we watch Sandy Morris and Anzekel Sidorova battle it out for that gold medal. Their scorecards are exactly the same. They can't be separated thus far. Oh. And I thought Morris was over there. And she knows how close that was. She just brought the bar down on her way down to the mat herself. Oh, she's got that distance, hasn't she? She's got that height. She knows it. Agonizingly close, of course. At this stage, you don't want to go away with that silver medal. That's the colour of the medal that Morris got two years ago in London at these championships. There we can see a great angle again, and she just nicked it, didn't she, on her way down. At this point, the competitors actually get upside down. They arc themselves over over the bar. But yeah, she just catches it there with a the stomach. It wasn't as close as Katie Najat earlier on when she actually landed first. The bar was still there, but then it landed on her. So here we go. Can Zidorova be the first woman to clear this 4.95 bar here this evening? 
if she can, Morris will have to go at five metres. She closes her eyes. She has a little look back. She just checks where she's going to put her hands on the pole, and here she goes. Plenty of speed on the runway. But it was just wrong as she planted the pole. Yep, she knew that. The red flag went up. This is the third attempt for Sandy Morris of the United States of America. 4.95 bar. She won the silver two years ago, clearing the same height as Stephanie but she lost that gold on count back. Can she go one better here this evening? Oh. And that was her best attempt. The crowd thought she got it. She thought she got it for a moment, but she'll be delighted with her performance here. Only Zidarova now can spoil her party. At the moment, as it stands, they'll share the gold medal. If Zidarova goes clear, Morris would be in the silver medal position. And you can see she grimaces, she holds her hand as if to say, oh, it's so close. And Zelika Zinarova, could this be her moment? This is probably the most important jump of her career so far. And she does! Zinarova goes clear for the third attempt. 4.95, a lifetime best. And she's tearful. That's what it means for her. And how amazing of Sandy Morris. She was cheering from her from the sidelines, even though she knows if she cleared it, that would result in her getting a second silver medal for a second consecutive world championships. Sandy Morris brought her A game this evening. What a fantastic competitor. Shows she's got that psychological grit when she needs it. And all the other girls going to congratulate Sidorova. She's our world champion 2019. But well, what a win for Angelica Sidorova. She came in with real form off the back of some big wins and a great performance at the match. A lifetime best, 495. She takes the gold. It's silver again for Sandy Morris. And bronze this time for the defending champion, Katerina Stefanidi. Holly Bradshaw just missing out.